I can't wait to watch the edited version and laugh. <laughs> Hello all, welcome back to my channel, Uncover Ifa. If you don't know who I am, I am Ifa Kanye Sola, Anisele Akin Wali. So I have a special treat for you guys this week. I wanted to give you guys more context on what Ifa is, of course, and the journey of devotees. So today you're going to be enjoying a conversation between me and my god sister, Ifa Fome Layo and Nisile Akin Wali. We'll be discussing her journey in Ifa, how she came to it, how it's been working out for her, how it's been benefiting her. It's going to be a really nice conversation and this will give some context to those of you that are thinking about Ifa and really trying to understand what it is. I think it's important to get the perspective of a devotee. So let's get into it. What's your name? My full name? Mm -hmm. My full names. Ifa oh, yes. name. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my Ifa name is Ifa Fumilayo um, Anaseri Akinwale. Mm -hmm. So repeat that Ifa one more time. Milayo, Ifa Fumilayo Anaseri Ifa Fumilayo. Akinwale. Akinwale. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So you also, I do believe you also have the same last part of your name because you are a part of Baba's God family. Yeah. So we're both Anasiri Akinwa. Okay. <laughs> right? Yep. So yep. for me, yep. my name yep. means as you come and receive Ifa, mm -hmm. we bring you the happiness, we bring you the joy, the wealth, the prosperity to be mm -hmm. with you now and forever. Ashe. So that's mm -hmm. my name. Ashe. <laughs> and it's, I love it. Somewhat, very, very little. It wasn't like growing up, it wasn't something that I ever gravitated towards or like could be a part of, even though physically I was in the church growing up. Mm -hmm. Like my aunt, she was very into church. I think she was a Protestant or something like that. I forget. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was with whatever my dad was with and he was like, whatever he was for the moment in time and then mm -hmm. most of my church time I spent it was in a different language so I didn't even know what they were saying mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I decided to actually pick up the bible at a younger age and read it it just it just didn't I didn't connect with it it didn't it mm -hmm. just didn't do it for me and I was just like all right so maybe this isn't for me yeah and I started looking around and then I let it go and I think by the time I got to like my senior year in high school, mm -hmm. I was like, I need to find something that's authentically me. Like I need to find something that hasn't developed post slavery, like mm -hmm. something that hasn't been like kind of forced down and jabbed down everybody's throats as a way of living their life. And I was just yeah. like, okay. And I started, I started right in Africa, like where everybody else would go. I'm like, okay, so we, Ethiopia going there and like just figuring things out and then like just stumbling around on Google like silly people do mm -hmm. I found Oshun mm. and I was like so infatuated and I was like this is beautiful I love it I don't know what this lady's about but this is me <laughs> me is her she is me we here we we are friends <laughs> I felt that bond right <laughs> so I was reading and I kept going with it to, so much so to the point where I got it like tattooed on me and I thought it was amazing like, I was like, this is something for me. Yeah. And I did the whole thing. I read about, like, who she was, like, you know, her lovers and things like that, her honey and all her goodness, her sweetness, mm -hmm. as oh, she I knows. <laughs> and I was like, this is so me. And I was so happy to find that. And then I think I just got distracted because, mm -hmm. you know, as people do. Yeah. And then it came kind back to me. lives are designed to do to distract yeah. us from that. It came back to me in a really, really beautiful way and it was just like instantly it was like ding 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 and then it's baba and i was like <laughs> okay right. i was like all right now i have what i was looking for so mm -hmm. long ago and it's right here in front of me and now i can partake in it i can participate in it and it was ifa and i was just so happy to know that there was something out there looking for me while i was looking for it oh wow Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so after beautiful. finding Ifa, how did you, after finding Ifa, did you feel like there was somewhere else that you could have gone? Like maybe you should learn a little bit more like Buddhism or something else. Like there was just nothing else at that point. 
Um, I'm not going to say that there's nothing else that I can learn because there's always room to learn and grow and to just basically find the correlations between every culture and how it can still reference to what I'm currently, you know, following my own personal path. Mm-hmm. But um, once I met Baba, it was just like, when I did what some may call the consultation or the Ifa divination, mm-hmm. what he told me in my divination was too spot on because I didn't have that conversation with him beforehand. Like there mm-hmm. was no, there was like, there was no like, oh, this is my bio. Like if you was to find me on um, social media, I don't have anything in my bio. Like there's right. not much of me out there. You really right. got to kind of dig at this point. So when he was like really telling my truth and I was stuck looking at the phone like this man is watching me <laughs> does he do I have an Alexa somewhere like who told this guy because I don't know him and he's telling me everything and I'm like I I I okay okay <laughs> tell me something else tell me something else so no, then you know as you keep, like as you keep going you figure out like there I don't there's not much you can hide there's right. there's no way of hiding it because it's everywhere it's all right. over the place right. every interaction every person the plants the trees the air the water the dirt all things is part of being any far so it's like there's nothing that's untouchable mm. like it's I've been touched where I was, well, that sounded crazy. So let's edit that out. (laughs) (laughs) Been touched, really? (laughs) You're like, wait, who did that to you? Run that back. She said that. that Chop that out. out. (laughs) Well, I have had personal conversations with people that have nothing to do with this this spiritual system. Mm -hmm. And the conversations that I've had has come up in the divination. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, all right it kind of took me back because it was like all right I mean you you was there but like I didn't really tell you that but right right (laughs) right whatever you say look whatever you say at this point because Mm -hmm. clearly you know what you're talking about right (laughs) you was right there with me (laughs) so there's no denying it so Mm -hmm. I I even now I on my spiritual path with Ifa but I do listen to like things on audible that are from the Buddhist perspective or Mm -hmm. from, you know, Christianity or someone who is Muslim or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I do mix in a different variety of things just so I could, you know, just be a little bit more. Get all, get the whole picture. Get a little bit more variety so I can have a better understanding. So I can relate to people when they do have questions and they want to know. Because sometimes Mm -hmm. people do stop me and they ask me because they see my hair wrapped up. Mm -hmm. So they just automatically assume something something whoop, whoop, what's going on I'm like yeah. nah actually my hair is just wrapped because my understanding is that my hair is really important mm. and you know being outside it's able to pick up energies and forces mm. and things that I don't really want to bring home yeah and it's also to keep in my personal positivity so it's like mm-hmm. I gotta keep that because it's hard it's hard to you know and, and you live in New York right I, Yes, I live in New York. Yeah, it's a busy city. There's a so, lot of energy. Yeah, so you know, I gotta like everybody minds your business. And some <laughs> days I'm just I'm just in the breeze. I'm just <laughs> I'm just in the breeze. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, not fine. <laughs> I can't help it. It's just how I am. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. All right. So um, one of the questions I didn't write down that I really wanted to ask was, do you feel after receiving your Ifa name, did you feel empower- empowered by that? Or like, like almost like another personality was created within you? Um, when I received my Ifa, like, all right. So after I did the whole recording and everything, I was extremely excited. I was joyous. I felt like I was living in my own bubble. Sometimes I still feel like I live in my own bubble, my own Mm -hmm. little e bubble. And Mm -hmm. um, I was just so happy to actually be moving forward. Like, cause it was something that I felt authentically from the inside out. Like I was like, yo, this is me. And I was like, I did this. Like I found this, it found me. Mm -hmm. It spoke to me in a way that 
nothing else has ever engaged me or even approached me and I was just like this is me I'm even getting a little emotional right now oh it's okay yeah sugar that'll help see my little berry drink from my <laughs> yeah but it was very much I was very much overwhelmed with emotions positive emotions nervous emotions because I'm like this is a completely new system and what if I have to do this and what about this and then we have to do Evo and then I was just like wow this is a lot am I ready for this and then um I just kept hearing like do it even though you're scared because mm. if you don't do it you're just gonna have the fear of not ever doing it or never experience what it was like to do it right and I was that just like, how do you put it. some, how do you tattoo it? Like, it doesn't. And how do you tattoo it? And then you want right. to ignore it's it when it comes pulling up on you. Like, like, <laughs> like, you gotta, like, if you have the opportunity to approach who is on your arm in real life in a physical manifestation or, you know, mm -hmm. metaphysical, and you're not, you're not taking the opportunity, then you need to go see somebody about taking that off because you're lying. Right. You're lying. <laughs> like, you're, you're doing it for a show now. Now it's yeah. for show. No, we're not doing it for a show. It's real over here in the battlefield. <laughs> okay. Straight so, up. Yeah, so after I received the physical, I do believe, I hope I'm not saying it wrong, it's the key, which is the palm nuts, which is your the thing that you would get. And it's, I was really happy to receive it. Of course, I cleaned it up, had to get my special little base, just like, you know, everybody goes through the process to set their thing up. And after I had it, I was just so excited. I couldn't like, <laughs> I couldn't contain myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I had to stop for a second. I'm like, oh, wait, I don't know how to pray. <laughs> so I'm like I don't know the prayer yet mm -hmm. and I don't speak the language and I don't know what I'm saying and I was like all right let's take a deep breath because mm -hmm. of course you went to church in a completely different language didn't understand what you were saying and just saying it so yeah you're fine there. <laughs> so now let's take the time to get the English understand it and then still try to pronounce it in the native tongue so mm -hmm. after Baba did the voice recording for me and he just basically said it as best he could mm -hmm. I listened to it like forever similar to how you did with your Ifa name trust me that is a process that is going to work out for me. <laughs> okay <laughs> so, so I sat there for ever listening to Baba say the prayers and it was just like all right and then I took my time to say it. I wrote it down a couple of times in English and in um, Yoruba. And then I was just like, all right. And then I just started doing it. And then I kept finding more prayers to say and kept going and kept going. Hmm. It's it's really sweet. It's like my own little microphone. <laughs> it's my best friend. <laughs> it's my best that. friend. And like, it's, it's my God. Literally. <laughs> so like, so just every day, that's what you do when you wake up. Yeah. And just you have a conversation, you have a prayer with your Ifa? Mm -hmm. So every day for the most part, I get up, um, mm -hmm. I do greet it. I say hello, like how I would normally say hello to another person, or I greet it in the the Yoruba formal greeting. Mm -hmm. And then I carry on about my day. And um, that's that's basically it, because my Ifa is everywhere. So I'm like, do my prayer, I'll catch you. I would say I'll catch you later, but I'm going to catch you as soon as I turn my back. <laughs> like we're gonna be outside together forever all day <laughs> so that's it's it was it was scary to me at first because I've never been around people who have something that they actually take the time to devote themselves to because that's essentially what you're doing your ifa devotee what makes you someone who is a babalao or an ifa is if you take the time to consistently study um, the language, the odus, the pele, all the things that would make you a diviner if you continue in that path and, you know, really push forward because that's something you're interested in doing, then that's what allows you to do those things. So nobody around me grew up to something that they were actually devoted to. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just like, all right, so what does this look like? What does it feel like? What is this new area of my life going to look like? And right. I thought it was going to be like this big thing, but no, it's, it's as simple as taking 15, 20 minutes, depending on how deep you're about to go into your prayer. You know, some mornings is you need the full hour to get it out yeah. there, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you got five minutes 
Mm -hmm. just thankful for everything you got and you don't really want to ask for anything and stuff like that you just want to and once I got my own flow Mm -hmm. yeah once I got into my own flow I was pretty much fine and I was like oh okay so do my little thing peace out (laughs) (laughs) chop chop and go Mm -hmm. yeah so and how would you it's not go ahead I was going to ask, so how would you describe your life prior to IFA and then now having your IFA? Do you feel like there's a difference in like the energy around you and how you experience life? Um, yes, actually, I am a lot calmer mm-hmm. overall. I have less things to be concerned about in mm-hmm. my life. I think as a result of just coming into the spiritual system and then, you know, doing some reading, finding who my head of Easter was, and then, you know, taking the time to do the actual self-work and correlation allowed me to pay attention and create what is now my new reality, which is Mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. I get to you know play with the bumblebees in a way that most people don't play with the bees like most people run in there's bees in my ear tickling me they in my shirt really strange I'm forever attracted to the beach (laughs) always at the beach need to be at the beach that's your job always at the beach doesn't matter where I go little children want to play with me they want to talk to me they want to high five me they want (laughs) to see what's up with me what I'm doing where we going like (laughs) that's that's just who my yeah that's that's just my whole nature. That's the vibe I give up to, you know, little kids. And I realized that this is, this is who I am as an individual. Mm. And I now get to experience me. Mm. And it's really beautiful. Like I get to grow my plants. I get to just be calm, just be in my own personal energy, Mm. stay away from the things that I'm receiving messages about as well as just people that just don't fit into my life plan mm. so it's right it's been really smooth with Ifa without Ifa <laughs> <laughs> oh no what do people say they'd be like it's not given something like that it wasn't <laughs> given <laughs> like, that's where it was at it was like I was I was really pooping <laughs> really cool. Okay. Um, okay, so another question I wanted to ask as a devotee of Ifa, uh, what is Ifa to you? Mm-hmm. Ifa is like he is. I don't want to say everything because that's like cheesy, and everybody says it's everything. <laughs> but he's it is a. I think it's a spiritual essence that is within the air within the people within the trees everything that has everything that's visible to the eye and even things that are not visible to the eye Mm. um I say that because there has been so many things that I've encountered through my path that allows me to know that there before this these were not the things that I was you know encountering it still was in a Mm -hmm. sense but it's a it's a different version due to me being a part of the path because you know the the more you stray off of it the more pain you'll experience Mm -hmm. but once you're on it it's a different type of pain that you'll go through it'll be a pain that strengthens you it'll be a pain that if you pay attention to it enough it, it teaches you a lesson that no one else could teach you or an experience won't be able to teach you this is the moment that you have to learn Mm. so I think just being able to connect with my ifa and know that it's literally in this very room as we're sitting and even this conversation Mm -hmm. it it makes me feel better more confident um more aware of my surroundings and the people that I'm interacting with because these sometimes people show up just to teach you a lesson to to show you something for you to learn something from them or Mm -hmm. to learn something more so about yourself than anything and it's Mm -hmm. important that while I'm still here while I'm still trying to pay attention that that is exactly what I'm doing that I am listening out 
loud. Mm. Just like my father's listening, I need to be able to hear and listen. And that's like, that's like really big. Yeah. And so that's what you feel like Ifa gives you this, this confidence to be aware. That, that's what I got out of it. <laughs> what you were saying. To be aware of the people around you, your surroundings, aware of what you're contributing, what you're taking away from any encounter that you have, whether it's a situation or with another person, mm-hmm. it's, it's important. And that's even stressed within the culture itself and is considered to be Iwa Pele. And mm-hmm. because that's something that's always evolving, that's always a number one factor. Any fall, that's I believe that that's exactly why I would respond that way, oddly mm-hmm. enough. Mm-hmm. Wow, that came back full circle. <laughs> look at you <laughs> yeah I'm okay. like wow I didn't know that so deep okay hmm, huh. <laughs> and so um one for the journal <laughs> right all right mm-hmm. and so who is your head Orisha who is your head my head Orisha is Yemonja or some mm-hmm. people say Yemaya mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So how do you feel connected with her? The mother of all. Currently, I feel a little, I feel like a little intermittent connection right now. Hmm. I think there's still some personal work that I have to go through Mm -hmm. in order to feel the extent of the connection that I'd like to feel. Mm. Um, I still have to go through my full initiation into that. Mm-hmm. as well I have to actually receive that Orisha so receiving the Orisha that is your Ori and stuff like that is also very vital to your trip to your journey because yeah. each Orisha has its own path that you have to follow and during that during that, that process you get told your your spiritual path that you're supposed to be taking and mm. I think the last time I checked I'm probably going to get the numbers wrong because like I've just been looking at a lot of numbers today Mm-hmm. But I think it's like 27 paths or 29 paths or something like that. It may be more. It, mm-hmm. it varies some places you go, but there's mm-hmm. a couple of different paths specifically for it, just Yemonja alone. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm excited for that part. Mm-hmm. But I know now is the time that I have to do the work to build the connection with my father to strengthen that since, you know, that's just basically everybody right there. Like right. they're speaking with the head honcho. Like I still want my head, but right. if I'm talking to the head honcho, mm-hmm. then I'm going to talk to the head honcho. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> right. excuse me. But he could talk to everybody. So let me tell him because he's going to tell everybody. Right, everybody going to be him at Right. Mm-hmm. right like and then and then i'm gonna give you all the things that you need yeah mm-hmm. y'all gonna get the things that you need from me yeah say thank you and i'll be out <laughs> like, <laughs> like, really, i was very happy to to hear that 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 was my head ori because when i first started mm-hmm. i was like oh, sure. and i was just like you know baby bopping and going around because i'm like you know mm-hmm. yeah i'm like that's it i see her she sees me and that's it and then at the same time that I was like, you know, looking for Oshun and things like that, I did see Yamonja because they sometimes do come up, you know, all in the same collection because of the search that you're doing. Right. So I did see Yamaya. And I think what I liked Oshun, I felt like I was Oshun, but inside I was like, I'm probably Yamaya because I'm always with the kids. Like I'm <laughs> always with the kids. I'm yeah, always great mother. around like a little kid. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'm childish, like mm-hmm. everybody always dumping their kids on me. Like, hey, you know, you look like you're showing my kid. Okay. Right. All right. <laughs> so I can't hide. I can't fight it. Like, that's mm-hmm. exactly who I am. And it it makes me joyous to know that I'm like, I'll appear as Oshun, but really, <laughs> I'm your man yet. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and even in, even in Yoruba, some people they separate Yemaya and Oshun, but mm-hmm. in Yoruba, depending on where you go, they are the same person, just in different phases of their life. So yeah, it's, it's amazing to see how it's all interconnected. I want to add to that because because you're absolutely right. As I started to really learn and understand Yemaya and Oshun and um, uh, the areas of energy in which they dwell, Yemaya is. 
uh, the surface of the ocean, whereas Oshun mm -hmm. is the river, but how does the river come to be? The ocean, mm -hmm. you see? So it's mm -hmm. like, it, it's still her. It's just a different, she's on a mm -hmm. different path. She actually took a walk through some land and then became Oshun in the energy of. So I thought that that, mm -hmm. was, that was a really cute connection. And then knowing that they are basically the same. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I just wanted to add that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because it's true. It's true because there's so much information. And, like, you know, when speaking with Baba, he always says that there's no one person that knows all of Ifa because there's mm -hmm. been so much of a disconnect. And then there's so many places that have their own little stories, their own little things that they talk about. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it goes down in their in their family's temple. Right. Well, my temple say that's what my temple. Our, our temple. <laughs> so, right. mm -hmm. and, so and, it's like, you know. And it's it and there's so many different paths in, in Ifa. Because when I first learned of Ifa, I was actually looking at Oloko Mi, which is mm -hmm. out of Cuba. And and I I felt a connection to it just like you did, um, just going down a path of Oloko Me. But then after coming to the realization and real and learning that it this is this actually originated in Africa, I immediately you know, spin tail over here, <laughs> Africa, <laughs> going to the root. <laughs> Somebody flipped the map. <laughs> right, Somebody right. flipped the map. I was looking at it wrong. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And in Oloko Me, they have their, they have the concepts of all the Orisha kind of the same way, but they kind of have their own little twists and spins here and there. And the same thing with, mm -hmm. why are you looking at me there? That was weird. <laughs> She's like, you're not. She's like, I'm probably a part. Ask me a question. Right. Oh, <laughs> um, so yeah. My favorite food is doggy food cake. <laughs> I like bones. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, can I have a snack now? I'm really trying to be patient, but you're taking too long. <laughs> you're not giving me your attention, which is really upsetting me. Okay. There mm. you go. Here's some attention. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah and then um there was i learned about palo centria mm -hmm. all of these different uh genres of ifa i don't know if i can use genre in there but all these different forms of ifa and they all have their own separate con now she's standing here looks sad <laughs> they all have their different kind of ideas of yamoya and oshun and alokun and so on and so forth I, honestly, I'm just really glad that we found the African version. Me personally, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like to know what it's like in the roots of things, you know. <laughs> in the roots, I felt that way too. I was like, um, no, yeah. I was like, if it's over here, I'm just gonna go over there where most things really started from. So, yeah, yeah, you nice. know, and you keep going though. I'm just gonna be over <laughs> there. Tell me one more bus stop away. You look great over there, one too, by the way. That's all. <laughs> right, right. You're doing wonderful. Maybe Looks we could so meet up at, like, a festival or something. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. We'll compare mm -hmm. notes later. How about that? So have you noticed a difference in your relationship with your Ori? Like, prior to, like, do you feel like you have a more of a, of a louder Ori? Your Ori speaks more to you, more in tune with your Ori? Do you feel like you have a more of a stronger connection since you've received your hand of Ifa with your Ori? I think, yes. To answer the question outright, yes. I do feel like I have more of a connection. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've had the connection beforehand, but completely ignored it mm. due to me not knowing exactly what that was. And really? thinking it was just like, you know, me being fearful or me just trying to talk myself out of it, you know, mm -hmm. self-sabotaging, all that other random things that you yeah. can put on top of the little voice in your head. So once I started, you know, going through Ifa and sitting more often meditating with my Ifa, mm -hmm. I realized that the very first thing that comes in, to my head is usually the best thing I should do. Mm. And I notice now more often when I don't do that. I don't want to say it's pain or suffer, but it 
it tells me why I should have did that. Why mm. I should have did the first thing that came to my head. Because mm-hmm. then it'll be like, it'll be something as simple as, hey, maybe you should, you know, um, unfortunately, I'll give this example. And it could be just circumstantial, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I seen, I was playing with my nephew and he was like on a balloon, a regular helium filled balloon, nothing too crazy. But mm-hmm. he was like full body on this balloon. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh, okay. Like we was laughing, we was giggling about it. And then the next thing, like the next thing I remember is mentally saying, hey, pick him up right now, pick him up. That's all I heard was like, pick mm-hmm. him up. Get him. Mm-hmm. And I did not pick him up. I turned my head and heard a pop and he just fell and burst his lip. And I was like, all right, maybe I should have picked him up when I was told to pick him up. <laughs> like, you know? Sorry, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I could have saved that. Like, oh gosh, it was sorry, kid. Like, don't don't flag me for abuse. I just didn't think it was necessary right then and there. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's like one weird thing, or like I will be driving and mm-hmm. I will be like, my brain will tell me I should go in this direction. It'll literally tell me the whole route, like, bust this left, go this way, and that way. And then someone else will be like, you know what? We should just do that because this way is faster. And then I do that, and then I get stuck in, like, a whole bunch of shit. And I'm like, like if I would have just listened, went left. <laughs> like, that's what it ends up being with myself. Like, if I would have just listened mm. or conversing with people, some things, like, I'd be like, all right don't say that got it Mm. do say this though and Mm -hmm. the conversation goes a little bit better or there's a better understanding or I'm able to you know get what I want so (laughs) because who doesn't want to do that so you know so those things I could say are happening more often I'm able to realize it and I'm really happy about that because it's signs of growth for me in a space Mm -hmm. where no one has taught me no one has really showed me Mm -hmm. a lot of this I'm kind of like you know picking off from other people that I see on YouTube and um yeah people who Baba Lao Abalade introduces me to and you know just following other Babas because it's not you can have your one specific Baba that you do everything with and then you can also learn from other Baba Laos because that's what they do anyway they all yeah. meet up and talk about it and you know go over things and be like how you do this with them okay what's right. the first comparing you notes the fast? <laughs> i don't know the fast yeah like i don't know the fast but you do so right. you say the fast i'm gonna just be in the back i know the song though <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm, I'm <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like that type of thing right right that'd be me you should see me i'll be laughing i'll be like yeah i know the song now so i can sing when y'all sing <laughs> i'll be really happy singing real low though right. i sing it real low <laughs> I want them to hear my singing voice. Oh, it's not good in another language. It's not good. It's like a little me a song. I, little yeah, he sent me a song and he sings it great. I don't know. Coming out of my mouth. I don't yeah. even think I'm saying the words right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, that's, so that's what it's like. I'm telling you. For me, when he sings a song, like there was one song he sent me and I had to tell him, like, I need you to type me the words. I always ask him to type me the words, but I need the words for real. Like, yeah, right now, because <laughs> this is not helping me. I'm yeah. like, what are you even saying? There's more stuff. He goes so fast it. sometimes. Bless his heart. <laughs> I don't understand. He do go fast. Where he's speaking of fast, he, so he speak fast yeah and it's natural that he does Ah. it's like all right so i need you to like talk like you hit your head just slow it way down (laughs) you said talk like you hit your head i've never heard that before (laughs) never heard that before that's amazing i might steal that (laughs) go for it talk to me like you hit your head (laughs) like what what slow way down. like you slow <laughs> look like you slow you like slow. you are right now <laughs> you don't like look the- like you are right now slow <laughs> you don't know or right. you must be slow <laughs> right you call it out like I'm mm-hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, so. but I think even in like I have I have found songs because I'm a little nosy person and I kind of want to know and sometimes mm-hmm. I want my information right this second you know five mm-hmm. hour time difference could be a problem so I'd be looking up little songs and even though um you know Baba sings the way he sings mm-hmm. it's kind of a pattern with all of the songs because they all kind of sound similar to Baba and I was like okay this is how y'all say it, it was it that song that's like three hours long did he send you that one no he didn't send me a three hours long I'm gonna song send you now. that one that one is so yeah. intense I love that one I fell asleep listening to it and it, it's, it's it's like three hours long and and I, I love it so much okay. he gave it to me to to in support of the this channel this YouTube channel um, he was like, yeah, just put it in one, put it in like your, your, uh, your closing and your intro. And I was like, oh, that's a genius idea. So I wanted to listen to the whole thing. Cause I'm like, I want the best possible part of this song. So I'm going to mm-hmm. just really sit mm-hmm. and listen to this whole thing. And I fell asleep a little bit, but I woke up and I kept listening to it and it was really long. It was really pretty. Minutes later. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. It's like 45 minutes of it. Gone, like, but... <laughs> I get you. I'll be listening to my music in my room like um I can't I, I should have wrote down the name of the woman but it's like a soundtrack of you know all songs dedicated to each Orisha mm-hmm. and when it gets to like the Yemonja song and they start off with the drums and they're like I'm like oh I feel like this is my chill yeah like this is my song and I didn't know that that really was my song like I knew it was specifically for me, but then when I asked Baba, what's the song for Yemonja? Because I was like, I just feel like, you know, I'm not really getting to connect with her. Like that was when I was in my little sad moment. I was like, I don't get to talk to her. We don't even do nothing. (laughs) So I just used to listen to that song and then I asked him to send it to me. And then he ended up sending me this song that I had already been listening to. And I was just like, okay, all right. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, what do we do now? Right. I got the extended version plus your version. So we good. We good. I'm set now. So now I can like rock out with my drums. Okay. And I really be loving it. So what would you say to someone mm-hmm. new to Ifa, new coming towards Ifa? What would you what advice would you give them in their journey? So for me, like me example, new booty, completely new. What kind of advice would you I'd have? say welcome? <laughs> welcome. <laughs> but um <laughs> I would say the best thing that you can do is, you know, go through what you just went through, get your hand of the mare, and um, make sure that you're ready for a journey that takes you into the places of yourself that you left behind mm. and be ready to reunite with the things that you felt like you once parted and healed Mm -hmm. from Mm -hmm. be ready to confirm that that's what you're ready for and Mm -hmm. you know understand that there's going to be highs there's going to be lows there's going to be gains there's going to be losses Mm -hmm. there's going to be days where you feel like you're ready to jump out of a window onto a trampoline and take a nap on the concrete because you just had a long day and Mm -hmm. it's better to you know express that it's Mm -hmm. better to say that out loud because if nobody's listening if I was listening and Mm -hmm. that is something that I've learned Mm -hmm. that's something that I can never not say because it's so true and it's it's so accurate to it's scary Mm. like even for my little sister like sometimes we talk about it and we go like I really stop because you know you already know (laughs) you know so just be be ready to find the most beautiful version of yourself and that's what I can say you know be comfortable with your Baba Lao find someone that you feel comfortable to you know confide in if you feel like you need some sort of advice because that's also important sometimes you know people are uncomfortable talking with their babas outside of ifa related activities i will call my baba in the middle of the night okay and i answer sometimes but i will 
Look, why I'm calling you? And I'm gonna leave you a really detailed message about why you should have answered my call. I'm gonna leave you a message. Right. Message. <laughs> so just be ready to just be appreciative of how your life can change mm. and you still be in the same body and not even know how to, you know really explain or navigate through unknown territories it's just every day is a new day and each day is something new someone some some new Orisha could be speaking with you you could be connecting with Shango you could be connecting with oh yeah like it's been late it's been really windy lately I'm not gonna lie as corny as it sounds I'll be in my house and I was thinking to myself one day like I was like I want to wear red I was like, hmm, let's just wear red, right here, right there. And then I was just like, I wonder what the weather's going to be like. Because we had like pretty consistent weather. And, mm-hmm. and I thought it was funny that on Oya Day that it was really breezy. <laughs> just really breezy. Mm-hmm. And she's the wind. So I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. You know, it'll be little things that you'll start to pay attention to that may not seem so significant to mm-hmm. another person. But... Mm-hmm. It's just little, I was like cutesy things that mm-hmm. you will be able to keep with yourself because that's the connection that you're building. Yeah. And it's a source of abundance. So it's like, you know, you're connecting to something that's plentiful. And who doesn't want to connect to something that's abundantly plentiful all the time at any point in time? Right. I don't want to meet that person. Me neither keep them over there i'll probably get the i'll probably get the rundown before they get any calls <laughs> right you're like oh i'll turn call. around <laughs> all of a sudden you start you start scratching your head like when's the last time i got a divination because i feel like Something's i feel off. like i need it <laughs> but yeah it's it's huh. so funny because that's that's the point that i get to sometimes when i feel like things don't make sense or like I just feel really out of balance. Like mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, there's something going on. I could feel it, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then I'll go get a divination and be like, the things that you are thinking of, they are exactly why you're here. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, oh, all right. So that makes I, sense. I'll be known. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so I'll be known. Right? Sometimes you don't, you. you don't truly know, but you just know. So. Right. Everything that you, you know, some people, it could be as simple as making their own doctor's appointment. That's a big Mm -hmm. thing for them. Like, so for me, it's, I'm always astonished when I can, you know, really just gauge where my, whether or not I'm in tune with myself or not, because that wasn't something that I was able to do. And it's like, you should always be able to be grateful for that because there are some people that can never find themselves Mm. and are forever looking. So yeah. I'm grateful for that. I'm thankful for what I have currently as a result after post default because it's just been, I'm living my life. I'm out here dabbing, dabbing, <laughs> you know, I'm being joyful. I'm happy. I'm smiling. Like my birthday is Sunday. Yes, my birthday is Sunday. And, you know, the the stars That's are early. lining up for Thank you, Yay. thank you. I got a lunar eclipse. I got. I do believe it's a full moon on the Sunday. On Sunday, so I think I'm special this year. And yeah, it's, it's Sunday the fifteenth. Yes, it is. Oh, girl, you have a blood moon <laughs> happening on your birthday. Yes, I got a lot going on. You so I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling. Thank you so much for having this interview with me. Thank you for doing this. Thank you so much. Thank you for got... having me. I'm really, I'm really thankful that you gave me the opportunity to speak because I see other people do it and I just look at other people and don't ever turn the mirror to myself and be like, I could do those things. No, I don't be doing that. <laughs> Even though I'm saying affirmations, that's not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so right yeah like so I was really shocked to see that that was the message I received from you and that you were actually you know welcoming me into your personal space to do this because this is really something that yeah. I'm truthfully always nervous to do and, and to it's honest, fairly new like I've recently it. just got here 
this is wow. Yeah, this is my I very first in, interview, and I'm just like, okay. So first of all, I, from this experience, I've learned that I first of all need to be a better interviewer. Read some books on that, and then um, I need to, <laughs> I need to I need to um, figure out how to edit this type of video because now because while you were talking, I was thinking about that like how do I edit this? Because uh, I don't want to, what you're like, the things you're saying is so beautiful. I don't want to cut it. I don't want to cut any of it. I just want to kind of leave it exactly mm -hmm. the way that it fell out. I'm gonna have to put the two videos that we recorded together, of course, but I don't want to cut any of mm -hmm. it. And I don't think that I am. I think I am going to try to keep as much as I can in there. Um, because everything you're mm -hmm. saying is so beautiful and human and it's you already even though you're not fully initiated and everything you already have a very beautiful connection with ifa and you're comfortable with where you are right now even though you're still going to move forward right like with your initiation and everything mm -hmm. but you're you're yes. so comfortable with where you are and you know that this journey is one of those things that take time you know and that, and that, that's the concept mm -hmm. that i really want to give my audience is that as a devotee there is that it, it's a process it takes time and it takes comfort and a whole lot of um learning of self and the ori and all of that before you can really you know um continue to move forward so like everything you're saying is exactly what i needed on my channel so thank you so much <laughs> And thank you for having me i'm really really excited and i really can't wait to see everything i'm so 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 excited to be a part of something like this like i've never done this before and this is just really great i'm glad i could do it with someone who's part of my god family Yay. and i really do <laughs> hope good things come from your youtube channel and that we are able to you know spread the message around so that people can have a better understanding of what it's like to be a part of an african yes. culture to look look for your roots find it and then what mm -hmm. what does it sound like? What does it look like? What do what do people who are everyday people go through? Because you kind of only hear about mostly celebrities doing things. You don't hear about regular people that live on the block next to the crackheads down the street. Mm -hmm. Like no, <laughs> so seriously. It's important that you have, yeah, it's important that you have somebody that or just a group of people that are speaking from their personal experience mm -hmm. that are going through the steps that are continuing forward. So you can also follow them in their own journey and they can express right. to you what they've been going through and mm -hmm. how they stumbled upon their or how they interact with Orisha. Because like I said, there's never, there's not one person that knows all of Ifa because we're all always learning. Yeah. Somebody's coming from underneath a rock talking about, well, I got this story about Obatala being this, this, that, and that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what you're talking about. Right. But we can talk about it and right. how that story no, represents you him, out. you know? Right. So it's because beautiful. It's a beautiful living, community. It's not like, it's not a book. Mm -hmm. It's not written and done. It's living and it's growing mm -hmm. and it's growing in all of us as individuals. So there's always more pieces of the puzzle, which is even more beautiful thing. Hey, I accepted our feeling and share. I accepted our feeling and share.